the Texans have to not make mistakes on special teams. When I played for teams, we knew we were out matched offensively. We took chances on special teams. Jim, look for that. Well, Jay, that was a big story here in the Thursday night game, September the 22nd. It's 28 degrees, partly cloudy, frigid night, but it's not all that raw. And the Patriots have deferred, so football coming to the Texans. And if you're a Texans fan, this, I would think, might be a big area of concern right here, Phil, because in that game four months ago, the Texans coughed up the football on two kick return setting up a 14-yard touchdown drive and a 27-yard touchdown drive two of the three touchdowns by the Patriots were gimmies thanks to fumbles on on kick returns that's Gutskowski getting it started and it's gonna be a touchback as Hunt will not bring it out so here comes Osweiler 14 and 8 overall as a starter going back with his Denver days factored in 9 and 6 this season and last week 168 yards, threw for one, ran for one. Again, no turnovers, as Phil mentioned. They did not have Dwayne Brown in the game here in September. He was injured. DeAndre Hopkins was pretty much held in check that night. As in that game, he was matched up against Logan Ryan, who did a good job on him. They're going to come right out on the shotgun and bring Miller wide to the right and empty out that backfield, as well as a couple of tight ends, both Griffin and Fedorowicz. So, Osweiler, to open the game, is able to get the ball in the hands of Hopkins, and he is wrestled down by Hightower after a pickup of four. Now, while the Texans lead in total defense, this bunch of Matt Patricia, Trey Flowers, second-year player, making a lot of plays, they gave up the fewest points in the league this year. Hightower, a pro bowler, in on that tackle, and again, Ryan, we'll see him a lot tonight. McCordy, a pro bowler as well. No huddle here, start for Houston. Yep, trying to get off to a good start. That was a big key for this offense and this team. Miller saw nothing there, and he just dives low for maybe a yard or two. Look, going against the best scoring defense in the NFL, when you talk about the Patriots, they're so diverse on the defensive side. They play a lot of guys, a lot of different coverages. You never know who's blitzing. So Bill O'Brien says that, man, we got to get off to a good start. That no huddle. The quick, easy throw from Brock Osweiler. The big thing, Jay Feely said it. Bill O'Brien said, for us to win, we cannot turn the football over. Three straight seasons for O'Brien at 9-7. and seven. First staff to have three straight winning seasons. Second straight year of the playoffs. And third and four, Osweiler looking for an option. And he is dropped by Ninkovich. Well... Bill O'Brien also told us three and out is okay. Nikovic coming to the outside. It just takes too long. Nobody's open. Nobody is open, and that's why Nikovic gets the sack. Shane Leckler to punt to Julian Edelman. Houston opens with a three and out. Edelman had a chance to do something with this one. From the 24. And wiggles outside as he shakes off a hit. And then it is brought down after a 15-yard run back. Moore with the tackle. Brady coming out. How about this? 32nd career postseason game. That is two regular seasons worth of postseason action. Pretty remarkable. The 22 postseason wins, that's more than 22 current franchises in the league have all time. Solder, the left side with that matchup that Phil diagrammed in the pregame show going against uh, a lot of clowning and company. Deion Lewis is the running back to start this game and not Blunt who had the big game against Houston earlier. Pass to Edelman and he's got a catch for about five. Houston defense of Romeo Cronell, another Bill Belichick disciple as well as Vince Wilfork, who have been showing a lot of signs and indicating he might be retiring after this postseason. Clowney has been sensational. So too has Boye, who came into the league undrafted out of Central Florida. It's a second and five for the Patriots. And they're going to go with Lewis. And the back, who was injured until early November, 
has been getting more and more action. Picks up four. Not third and one coming up here for Brady and company. Yep, going with the quick cuddle. Don't let the defense get set. They love doing this. They have great success when they go quick. They go to the ground. Stacked up and stopped. In fact, the ball was down. And they're saying it was a whistle first. He ran into Clowney. Who Took him down for a loss of one. Vince Wilfork on the center that time did an excellent job. Was he down? Let's find out. Look at Clowney on his back. Yep, the elbow went down. Contact took him to the ground, of course, so that will not be a fumble. But that's a good sign for the Houston Texans that little, always when it's third and one, the New England Patriots love that. No huddle, go to the line, run the play. They lined up properly, ready for it. Vince Wilfork. The expatriate made the play. And what did Bill O'Brien say last night? We could not afford, he told us, to go out there and give up an early touchdown. Trying to play it close to the Patriots. Keep them under control early. Let it get away from them quickly like it did the last time as Ryan Allen punts it down to about the 19 where Tyler Irvin makes the fair catch after a 34-yard punt. So, three and out for each side, we're underway. Divisional playoff time at Gillette Stadium. Well, Jim, let's go back to that first drive the Patriots had. I, I said three and out is okay. Bill O'Brien, he says, we're going to have those situations. The big thing is just to make sure we protect the football, the strength of the team. We know is their defense. Don't give this Patriots football team any easy points by turning it over. Here's a first down give to Miller, and Alan Branch is waiting for him. So Bill O'Brien says three and out we can live with. Now when New England has a three and out, he says it's like a funeral over there because they expect to move the ball every time they get it. But I think benching Brock Osweiler has really brought this team, and now they really have a clear vision of how they want to play the game. Conservative on offense, be extremely careful with the football. It's a second and eight. Osweiler didn't have to sit on that bench too long because Savage, once he was given a chance, ended up getting injured. Suffered a concussion in the game at Tennessee week 16. Second and eight. That pass wide of the mark for Fuller, who was standing there alone. Well, hey, listen, I don't know whose fault that is. Looks like it's Brock Osweiler's. Fuller was coming on the inside, coming on an in cut, and he misses him. And that's what you cannot do. You cannot miss wide open receivers. When you get an opportunity, hard to get against this defense, you can't miss them. And back to your point about Osweiler. Again, he wasn't out for long, but he said sometimes you forget. And it did remind him, standing on the sideline, just to go have fun. And the next time he said, I was going to get out there, I said, I'm going to trust my instincts, and I'm going to cut it loose which he might be doing here on third and eight as he rolls out on the run and it's knocked down. That was done by Logan Ryan denying the pass into Mumphrey. Yep, Logan Ryan on Mumphrey, number 26 on the inside, breaks out. Nice job by Osweiler. That's what I'd love to see him do tonight. He's done it in the seven quarters he's played since he came back in. When it's not there, move around. Try to create an opportunity. Great play there by Ryan, and it's left foot toward the sideline. Edelman with the catch at the 35 as he slides out of bounds. 43-yard boot, still looking for a first first down of this game. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. And by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. The Atlanta Falcons advanced to the NFC Conference Championship game earlier. That game opened the first three drives with three touchdowns. We opened with three drives and three three and outs. As Brady has time to go long for Hogan. There was contact in it. Brings out the flag. It's going to be on Boye. Stuck his left arm out in front of Chris Hogan deep down the field. He was in great position, did not need to use that arm. Pete Morelli. Number 21. Defense, automatic first down. 
A.J. Boye has had a terrific year. He is the best cover guy on this Houston Texans defense. Down the sideline, watch the last second. You see the arm goes in front. That's what they see. That's why they threw the flag. Well, Boye wasn't believing it. It's a 30-yard penalty. Blunt comes into the game now. The big back is so powerful. That's going to be Brady throwing time again. The sideline and hanging out there is Hogan. He's got the catch. All about the pass protection that time. That took a long time for somebody to get open. Chris Hogan definitely has his knees down, gets his arms underneath. Nice catch. So Brady goes to Hogan on two straight plays. One draws a 30-yard pass interference penalty. Well, Hogan won the free agent signings during the offseason, and they talked about him. He's lived up to everything they thought he would be. Mm -hmm. That play any, can play anywhere on the field, any position, very smart. And the last play went for 22. Out of the backfield, they get it over to Lewis. Look at this speed. Deion Lewis to the end zone for the touchdown. That's a matchup that you have to look for here tonight. Running backs from New England against linebackers of the Houston Texans. And they got Deion Lewis against Benardrick McKinney. And more and more, we're seeing Deion Lewis in the game as a running back. So quick, so fast. Well, you got Deion Lewis. You know, you have James White, two guys that can both come out of the backfield. And if there is a weakness in the Houston defense, one of the weaknesses is the big linebackers. Can they cover man-to-man -man against the running backs? Well, Martellus Bennett, he gets up. Pretty nimble looking the way he got up, and he was whacked on the side hit by Cushing. Bennett, who's been such a valuable offseason pickup in the trade with Chicago, especially with Gronkowski on IR for the third time in the last five postseasons. How fast did Lewis look once he caught that football, oh too? Goodness. Boy, is he back from that slowly coming back from surgery, getting better every time you see him. Well, there's actually just two plays because one play was the pass interference call. Two plays, 65 yards. The final 13 handled by Dion Lewis. Lewis blew out a knee last year, week nine. And alas, he was not a part of the postseason. He becomes the 25th different receiver of a Brady postseason touchdown pass. And Houston up here at Gillette Stadium, 0-4 all time. And in the games that Brady's played in, three of those four, they always went over 40 points all three times. And they have just gotten the early edge big on Houston. Now 55 to three in first quarter games all time. When the Texans have come to Gillette. They've never produced a touchdown to Texas. They've got a run back here by Hunt to about the 24. Well, let's just look at what happens. It's really not man-to-man -man defense. Here comes Lewis out. Here's McKinney. He's just going to try to see if he can get out there fast enough to make that tackle in space. And Tom Brady right away notices it and realizes what he has. Devlin leading the way. And Deion Lewis. Wow. Is he quick? Watching him in practice on Thursday. We saw that pass thrown to him. He could just catch it and outrun most linebackers in the NFL. That is Hunt coming into the backfield as the Texans have it for the third time. Not generating a first down the first two drives. Hunt with a flag out. Tackled by Hightower after about four. Pass interference, offense, number 10. 10-yard ten penalty remains, first down. Called on Hopkins. Well, you cannot block downfield before the football is caught. There it is. He's blocking right away. It's an outside, really a screen. Good time, so that's a good call. So first and 20 as they're backed up to the 13. 
I've managed five yards so far on six plays. That's a completion and a quick stick on four. That was Butler who knocked well, him down after a six-yard pickup. Look, a lot of problems when you think about this game and the matchups for the Houston Texans offense. You know, one, uh, can they run the football? That's what they really want to do. They're eighth in the NFL running the football, but this defensive front of the Patriots, they always crowd the line of scrimmage, and they have tremendous run stoppers inside that makes it tough. And the other thing is, when it's man-to-man -man coverage like this, can they get away from the Patriots defensive backs? Second and 13. Tossweiler, pressure from behind, and he's sacked for a second time in this quarter. It is Logan Ryan. Well, two sacks, exactly the same coverage as both times, and it's a blitz from the outside. He's coming over here from the left, Logan Ryan. It's a zone defense, nowhere to throw it quick enough, and that's just part of what we talk about. All the players, so many roles on the defensive side for the Patriots. It is complex, and Bill Belichick has changed his team over to where they are fast also. Ryan, who had that uh, pass defense on a third down throw, the previous possession, now comes up with the sack, third and 18. Underneath, Hopkins never going to get where he needs to go for the first. And that does, yeah, draw a flag. You know, the Houston offense is not good enough to overcome sacks, big 10-yard penalties, negative plays. So this flag comes on the heels of a 10-yard completion to Hopkins. And then a scrum, about 10 players involved. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, pulling a player off the pile, number 25 defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. That's the first break of the game for the Texans. And it'll give them a first down. They get out of a third and 18 situation with this play and the penalty. Well, 25, Eric Rowe. 25. Yep, there he is. He's pulling out. Can't tell who it is, but that's where the flag was thrown. And that was a big break the Houston Texans needed to kind of change momentum and settle the crowd down and maybe settle their defense down. And well, Bill Belichick has a few yeah. words, choice words for Eric Rowe. Yeah, they're rolling. You know, he says, hey, wow, we've scored. We got the crowd going. Got them backed up. Big penalty against the Patriots, to say the least. And now Houston... Able to operate from the 40 with a new set of downs. Laguna Miller tries to get outside, and he slips through one hit. And he's got about six. And again, it's Ryan on the tackle along with McCourty. Hey, do you have what it takes to be crowned a Madden 17 Club Series champion? Represent one of eight NFL teams, including the Patriots, by registering at NFL.com slash Madden dash NFL. Well, that was a really good run that time from under center. Good job by Lamar Miller, seeing it was packed inside and broke it out. Texans have moved O'Day Abushi to right guard in place of Jeff Allen. Second and five, faking left, going right, got a first down. And into New England territory, the connection with Miller. Really good job that time by Brock Osweiler. Looks a little bit left. Watch him look left, and it turns to his right and throws it, something he did not do in the first game. I went back and looked at it. A lot of short throws were open underneath, and he was trying to force the football down the field. I think he's learned through time, and those four-yard completions are great. In that last meeting, Houston didn't enter New England territory until the third quarter as they now get a nice burst ahead for Miller. In fact, they ran only seven total snaps on the night on the New England side of the field and never got inside the 35, but they're Putting a little something together here now as they pick up seven with that play. Very good block by Sue Afilo, the left guard. Yeah, you brought up some of these stats to Bill O'Brien last night. He was really happy to hear this. Uh, oh, he actually yeah. thought he never ran a snap. In the, I know, he said we field. never crossed it. I had to tell him it was seven, actually. And Miller. That 
people on him right away, including Allen Branch, who's made a couple of nice tackles already. Well, that's what I talk about. You know, so many people think this New England defense, they just don't realize how good they are. Leading the league and points given up. Yes, their offense helps him. But Allen Branch, Vince Valentine, Malcolm Brown are the three big run stoppers inside. Third and three, the Texans bring in Jonathan Grimes. Osweiler has the first down to Grimes. He was then thrown to the ground by Rowe, the one who kept this drive going with the personal foul penalty on third down earlier. Well, it was a good job. Two on two to the right side. Brock Osweiler picked the right, the right way to go and put the ball on the money with some, with some speed because they close fast and are good tacklers on the defensive side. First down. New England 36. He's got Fedorowicz near another first. Gonna mark him about a half yard short. Sunday, next Sunday that is, 18 people will go on the run from a team of expert hunters. CBS presents a real life thriller. Hunted premieres next Sunday after the AFC Championship game only CBS. I think since Brock Osweiler has come back in the lineup, the one thing he has learned is to use the tight end more. C.J. Fedorowicz, he's gone to him a lot. Ryan Griffin, he likes to work him too. too. Yeah. Why not? Easy throws to the tight end. Second and short. Grimes has got the first. Plows ahead to the 20. Running behind Ciafilo. Ciafilo, boy, he's had a couple good blocks in this game. That time pulled around. Made that block and... Kind of settle things down. This offense, this is what they want, of course, to shorten the football game. And getting some confidence moving the football here, which we never saw in their game in, at all in week three. Four first downs picked up on this drive. And now from the 21, Osweiler going to the end zone. And Oh, off the hands of Fedorowicz. Chung on the coverage. You kind of tell what they're going to do here tonight. Fedorowicz on the outside against Patrick Chung. Very good cover guy against tight ends. Left a little early here, didn't he? He just kind of mistimed it here. Yep, he did. Mistimed the jump or the move. But the tight end running back to one side, three receivers to the other. Seems like a good matchup for this Houston offense. So they had a good shot there, and the pass was perfect. Just mistimed, and now the 12th play of this series, a second and 10 to Miller. Going to try to bounce it outside. Slips through the tackle. He's got it down to about the 17. And let's take a look now from our nationwide sky cam. As you see, Miller who missed the last two weeks of the regular season with an ankle injury, but then was called on for 31 carries in the game against the Raiders last week. Yeah, we talked to him last night. I said, any any residual effects from that 31 carries? Oh, no. Playoff time. He's ready to go. Third and six. Akeem Hunt comes in for Miller. They go over to Hunt. Trying to shake off McCourty, but there are others waiting for him, including Van Noy. Now that'll bring out Novak for a field goal try. This New England defense faster now than in years past, and it got faster. Year went along, and once you stop and try to make a move against McCourty, look at all the people that came and the defenders that get there to make the tackle. So Novak has made 37 straight inside 40. Two for two last week against Oakland, including a 50-yarder. This from 33. Leckler on the hold. And the Texans are on the board. Didn't seem likely at one time. Third and 18 in the penalty on row right here. 
Kept the Texans offense on the field. Leads to a 33-yard boot by Novak. 7-3, Patriots first quarter. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Pepsi. Break out the Pepsi. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. You know, some just learning to skate a little bit and taking their time. But 7-3 here, New England in the first quarter after a 14-play drive by the Texans. Six different rushers and receivers handling the football on that series for Houston. But it takes 12-play drives to usually score against this defense, even a field goal. And it's Deion Lewis. From the two and taken off. He's taken off. Peters trying to chase him. That is not a fair match. Lewis is going to break it. 98 yards. Larry Izzo, the special teams coach and a former Patriot linebacker. Can't believe it. Well, he can't believe it because it was such a focus coming into the game. It's a beautiful high kick to one side of the field. And then Deion Lewis, boy, that's the tackle. Once he breaks it, there's no way he's going to be caught. And Brian Peters, the linebacker, could not stay with him. This time they give it the return. Last time it was them fumbling the kickoff mm -hmm. returns. Ninety-eight yards, Lewis scoring. Both touchdowns. What a weapon, Deion Lewis. Mm. Guskowski, extra point is true. With a minute to go in the first quarter. Deion Lewis showing all kinds of explosiveness tonight. 13-yard touchdown catch and a 98-yard sprint to the end zone. That was the longest playoff kick return in Patriot postseason history. And the first kick return regular or post for a touchdown since 2012, October of 2012 when McCourty had one in a run back in a game against the Jets. Well, you wouldn't be surprised who made some good blocks in that kickoff return. Matthew Slater, James Devlin, the fullback. I think the other one, Gino Grissom, the defensive lineman. Now this one only to the 10, Hunt. Would have loved to have tried to match it, but no chance. There are four Patriots waiting for him, including Patrick Chung. Well, Tom Brady, pretty excited. Joe Judge, special teams coach. <laughs> Ray Ventron, the special assistant special teams coach. He's pretty excited. And the opposite, Larry Izzo, special teams coach for the Texans. Clowning. Yep, yeah, it's got to be upsetting. Of course it's upsetting to the players. They know how perfect they got to be here tonight and give up a special team's touchdown. Tough to overcome. Alfred Blue seeing his first action. They don't go to him instead. The pass. Dangerous one to Fuller. It's only good for two. Tracy. We just saw Jadevian Clowney after that special teams touchdown. He was walking up and down the sideline, so frustrated. He threw his helmet. He had to be held back at one point, just really upset with that touchdown there. But still, the teammates telling him it is still, there is a lot more left to be played in this game, Jim. I'm trying to exercise some uh, leadership ability on that sideline. Clowney, who has really emerged this year after two injury plague years, former First overall selection, second and eight. There's a completion to Mumphrey, and he's stopped a yard short. That was Ryan making sure he kept him short of the chains. And we're going to run out of time here in the first quarter. Yeah, the kick return game, such a big part back in September when the Texans coughed it up twice, leading to touchdowns. And on this occasion, the Patriots run one back. After one, 14-3. The AFC playoffs are now on CBS All Access. Go to cbs.com slash NFL now to try it free. We start the second quarter at Gillette. Jim Nanceville, Simp, Tracy Wolfson, Jay Feely. 
Quick snap to Osweiler rolling out away from Branch and he's only able to dump it off for a one yard loss to Miller. Well, how about that? Third and short. They go with the play action pass, thinking Lamar Miller's going to be wide open in the flat for the easy throw, but Patriots, Logan Ryan, not full, think and run. Stays where he's supposed to. Look at the top of the screen, number 26. Stays right there, and Miller just comes right to him. Leckler, his third punt. Edelman makes it go, bounces at the seven, and then on in for the touchback. Net of 43. Brian Cushing of the Texans is the team's nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, presented by Nationwide. This prestigious honor recognizes players who have made big contributions in the game and in their communities. In 2015, Brian established the Brian Cushing Foundation to serve and honor the men and women who protect our country by providing them resources and experiences. Three finalists will be announced during the NFC title game next Sunday with the winner being announced at the NFL Honors Award show February 4th on Fox. From the 20, Brady intercepted. Throw it the third time this year. It's Boye who gets it off the deflection. And the Texans suddenly get something to go their way with Brady having thrown only two picks the entire year. Michael Floyd, the football just out in front of him, a little too much. He knocks it up in the air. And you know, we even talked about this with Tom Brady. You got to be lucky sometimes to go a year and throw two interceptions. This time he was not to tip football. Boye there to make the catch. Boye is in the final year of a contract, and he has emerged as one of the highest rated corners in the game. That's Michael Floyd. Pass a little out of reach, but maybe not enough so to see it bounce off his hands and not be caught, but lead to an interception. Boye sets up the Texans at the 27. Osweiler fires it to the 20, and it is caught by Fuller for a gain of seven. Well, good read by that time by Osweiler throwing it to Fuller because they double teamed DeAndre Hopkins. You know, that's what you got to be ready for. The Patriots famous for trying to take away your best weapon. And when they throw the football, that's DeAndre Hopkins. That time they double teamed him. Good job by Osweiler going outside. So far in this game, the Patriots have run six plays, and they lead it 14-3. to And off up the middle for Miller and a first down. You know, I asked, you know, the Patriots coaching staff, I said, why don't you move guys around more, uh, uh, you know, the Houston staff, I mean, on offense, move them around, try to confuse the Patriots defense, and he goes, nope, by moving around, what you do, you just will confuse yourself because they do so much with all the guys that can play two positions and move. So you don't see much motion or movement by this Houston Texans offense. And there's Deion Lewis, the reason they lead 14-3, to the first player in NFL postseason history to have a touchdown catch and a kick return for a touchdown in the postseason in the same quarter. As Osweiler goes to the end zone and it is a fight for the football. And it was almost picked by McCourty, but Fedorowicz was able to take it out of his hands. He was on him the whole way, boy. He stayed in perfect Holding. position. Number 74, offense. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. Chris Clark, flag for this one. Looked like for a while McCourty might come up. Uh, he was there. He was yeah. in a better position than Fedorowicz. Don't forget, he was a corner, and he is a tremendous free safety now in the NFL. Can really cover sideline to sideline, and he can match up and cover any tight end in this league. What a nice luxury to have a safety who can cover like a corner and still be one of the best free safeties in the NFL. It's a first and 20. Off the holding call. Miller on the toss. And coming up is Von Van Noy to hold him to four. Yep, that's it. That's it. Kyle Van Noy inside. They got him this year from Detroit. And just a little bit of the change that, you know, Jim, we talked to Bill Belichick about how they just changed the style of this defense. A couple big guys up front. Chris Long, they brought him in, very versatile, fast. Roberts, Van Noy, McClellan, 
All good speed at the linebacker Watch position. It. Second and 16. From the gun, Osweiler again going to the end zone and over the head of Fuller. Butler right there with him. Well, Malcolm Butler wasn't voted to the Pro Bowl, but he could have been. They put a lot of pressure on him. A little double move that time by Fuller, and Malcolm Butler not fooled at all. You believe this is one of the best defenses you've seen at New England? It is. It's just, just because of all they could do against the modern-day offenses. And uh, you can see that little double move on the outside. Not yeah. enough deception to fool Butler. Third and 16. Clear it out with Hunt. They're going to go to him. He's able to get past the wave and zigs and zags down to about the eight. Two yards shy of a first. Good piece of running by Akeem Hunt, but not enough. But he took it. He put that's a play that comes out of the Patriot playbook. You get in these situations, third and long, throw a screen and see if you can make it happen. And then uh, Bill O'Brien, no, no doubt, you kick the field goal in this situation. It's only going to be about a 26-yard field goal attempt by Novak. Well, you got to be, you got to say this, Jim, the Texans offense, a little more assertive, sharper, definitely making more plays. Looks like Jabal Sheard limping off the field. Jabal Sheard is uh, slowly walking to the sideline. And McCourty got dinged as well on that previous play. But McCourty uh, is still out there as the Texans are lining up what's going to be a 27-yard attempt by Novak, who made a Texans team record 35 field goals in the regular season. Already good from 33. And this time nails it from 27. All set up by the A.J. Boye interception. Little factoid from our man Ethan Cooperson who keeps our stats. Since the Lewis touchdown from 13 yards out, the first one, the touchdown catch, Houston's run 21 plays to one by New England. But the Patriots have scored 7-6 advantage in that stretch because of the 98-yard kick return by Lewis who awaits this kick and is going to get a chance to run it again, this time from the three. Ball is on the ground. And Pete Marilli signals right away. It's no, he changed. He first signaled the other way. It's a Houston recovery. Well, we could hear the hit. I'm sure you could on TV too. Recovery by Eddie Pleasant. It looked like it was Tyler Irvin. Yep, Tyler yep. Irvin who hit him. And look at punching the ball out was a keen dent. And Eddie Pleasant does have the recovery. Well, Bill O'Brien just said we got to find a way to get some turnovers. Hopefully, get a bounce go our way. Got well, they, two. You that got was, two. They got a bounce go their way. That time they just took it. That was such a hard hit and such a great job of punching it out. Bill O'Brien excited. He knows that's the the breaks they need to win this game. Now, what can they do with it this time? From the 12. Run it. Miller meets Branch again for two. You don't go into a game really expecting you're going to see the Patriots turn the football over twice, but they have done that now in the first 18 and a half minutes of this game. But when you watch them and all the games that I've watched of the Patriots, you go, wow, they don't even get, they don't even get close to turning the football over. You never see the ball on the ground. Tom Brady, when the ball does get tipped by a lineman, it usually falls in between the defenders. Not here tonight. Second and eight. Taking the reverse, throwing to the end zone, wide open. It's a Houston touchdown for Dorowitz. <laughs> Uh, it was a really good fake. They faked the reverse. 
and that's what it is. Always about scoring, especially, I think, inside the 20. It's about deception. Here's for Dorowitz. They fake the reverse and just watch the defense react to it. Here it comes. That's beautiful. You got tight end coming across Griffin, and now nobody sees Fedora what's going in the back of the end zone uncovered. He got away from Deron Harmon as everybody went for the reverse. Shoot, I went for the reverse. I yeah. was watching the lead blocker go there. Nice fake. So that is the first touchdown in the Belichick versus O'Brien matchup in a little more than nine quarters. Going back to the game in December a season ago, September this year, they had never put up a touchdown. Got one now. Lewis ran one back and then gave one back. Osweiler pays it off, finding his tight end for the touchdown. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chili's three-course meal deal. Chillin' since 75. H&R Block. Get your taxes won. And by Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks for 40 straight years. 10 unanswered points by the Texans. And again, that play count, it's just bizarre. 29 plays to six plays run by the Patriots. Lewis back up there again on the goal line. Cuts it outside. Chase out of bounds. Second quarter, we've seen Tom Brady take only six snaps so far in this game. Yeah, got to get him in rhythm. There's no question. You know, that's what they want to do. But uh, Bill O'Brien's big point to us, all he kept talking about, of course, about the turnovers. Can we possess the ball long enough to shorten the game to give our defense to keep them rested so when the opportunity's there, they can make the play? So far, Tom Brady has not been under pressure. It's not that he's thrown a lot of passes, only four. Run it. First handle of the game for Garrett Blunt. And Garrett Blunt. Well, you want to get pressure on Tom Brady. Next gen stats. Whitney Merciless, fifth in the NFL. In the time it takes him to get to the quarterback and get the sack. That's pretty dang good. And then how about this? Jadavion Clowney, third in the NFL, gets there. 3.62 seconds, so they have two outstanding outside rushers. Can they get the Patriots hey, Roger, in third long? Make Brady hold the football. That's what they're hoping for. Second and eight. And the completion goes to Bennett. It's only good for about three. It's third and five coming up. Kareem Jackson on the tackle. Well, just look what they do. Here goes Jadavian Clowney, and then here comes Cushing, and they get a free runner and a hit on Tom Brady. Hard to do. Pass protection's always excellent. He gets rid of the football quick. And that completion, 42 minutes of actual real time since Brady's previous completion in this game, the 13-yard touchdown toss to Lewis. A good example how they move Clowney around. Third and five. Chase after him, Merciless. And now Brady is doubled up. Cushing is there. Merciless gets to him as well. And that time they put Merciless on the center. That's the, something they like to do right here in the middle. And why is that such a good thing? Because he's so quick and powerful, hard for a center to take him one-on-one. -on -one. And that time David Andrews had no chance. Tom Brady trying to get down before the Cowboy gets him. Allen, his second boot. And it's Bullitt fielding it at the 35, straight ahead. Bounces off his own player, and the Texans are going to be set up in good starting field position again. Right at midfield. 46-yard punt, 16-yard run back. He's got a 14-13 New England lead. Second quarter. Robert and Jonathan Kraft seeing their franchise this year win a division title for an, a record eight consecutive year. But the Texans now set up on the New England side of the field at the 49. And again, it peeled off 10 unanswered points. Bacon to the line, Osweiler. And he had Miller open underneath, missed him. 
tomorrow, an early season Big Ten battle. Michigan State against the Buckeyes of Ohio State right here on the road to the Final Four, CBS Sports. I think Osweiler just threw that last one away. Not that he missed Miller, he was open, but I think he thought or felt pressure behind him, got rid of the football to try to get away from the negative play. Second and 10, and it's Miller. Ah, I tell you, number 71, Xavier Suofilo is having a night. Yeah, he's, uh, they are really high on him, especially in the run game, Phil. Well, they should be, and he's showing it tonight. That's three times we've watched him pull around. Watch number big 71 get through there. And the contact he makes, boy, it's a good job by Roberts getting off and falling on the legs of the running back to bring him down. A third and five. They love to get a lot of people at the line of scrimmage, the Patriots defense. Then they usually drop out. Osweiler hangs in there and pass. Almost intercepted by Logan Ryan. Hopkins, the intended target. Well, that time they came with the pressure, nowhere to go. Couldn't step into the throw, but it doesn't matter because nobody's open down the field. Let's watch Hopkins, number 10, against Logan Ryan. And Logan Ryan, he's not trying to cover people. He's trying to get the interceptions. Leckler trying to pin him deep. Edelman slides over, gets it at the 10, did not signal a fair catch. Texans looked like they thought he was going to just naturally do that. So he gets it out to the 17. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subway. Search for better. And by AARP. Real possibilities. Surprised by what you're seeing here, Phil? Well, yes, I am, you know, to a degree. I think what surprises me is the fact that the Patriots offense Diamond! hasn't got on track yet. Diamond! Barely been on the field. Linda. Brady, four out of five. One incompletion was a pick. As he almost saw that one, that took what came awfully close. Andre Howe jumping in front of Deion Lewis. Yeah, really aggressive on the coverage. Turnovers, you don't see them from the Patriots. The fewest in the NFL is what they did. And tonight, already two turnovers. Yeah, they turned it over only 11 times the entire regular season. Tied for fewest with Atlanta. Andre Howe very aggressive against Deion Lewis in that man coverage that last play. Second and ten. Well protected this time. He lost it to Lewis who turned around and is not able to hold on. Merciless running down there with him. Merciless and McKinney, they have him double teamed. They inside and outside, really good job. Tom Brady, there's McKinney on the inside and Merciless stays with him to knock it away. So, once again, trying to get Deion Lewis against linebackers. He knows it. Yeah, excellent play. Stars got to make plays in games like this. Clowney on defense. Merciless. Third and ten. Blitz. How coming in. Brady's got time to unload it. Hogan turned around and he caught it. Also getting turned around was Corey Moore. That was not the best spiral of Brady's career, but it goes for 45 yards. Well, he knew it was an all-out blitz that there would be nobody free in the back of the defense. And when you throw it high and far in the air, always much easier for the receiver to find the football than the defensive back. Well, remember Houston without Quentin Demps. That was an all-out blitz by the Houston defense. Who likely would have been the guy back there, but inactive because of the hamstring injury suffered against Oakland. You, you, you! Fake to Blunt. Down the field to Bennett. Everybody looking around. Is there a flag? No. More on the coverage again. The Pro Bowl is heading to Orlando. You can watch your favorite stars compete in the 2017 Pro Bowl presented by Aquafina.
They're going back to the AFC versus NFC days. You don't want to miss it. Tune in Sunday, January 29th, 8 Eastern. Plus, check out the Pro Bowl Skills Showdown on Thursday, January 26th, all on ESPN. Well, you know, the Patriots, they see this man-to-man -man defense, Houston being aggressive. They're going for the big scores three times down the field deep. Second and ten, Lewis. Run down by Jonathan Joseph after four. Powell and Hogan exchange some shoves. But again, the Houston defense, number one in the league this year, total defense, that category. All about total yards given up. Now, when the Patriots have gone into the postseason against number one defenses, well, they've won three and then lost last year to Denver. Well, there's Romeo Cornell. He's been pretty creative on the defensive side. Once again, Merciless and Clowney on the inside of this offensive line. Third and six. Merciless coming after him and may have taken him out of field goal range back at the 38. Yep, yeah, they got a good game plan. How about that for Romeo Cornell? And once again, you get Clowney and Whitney Merciless on the inside. Here he is. It's just almost impossible to block him one-on-one. -on -one. What a spin move. Tom Brady can't get away. He did a good job not fumbling. Well, they're not going to go for the 55-yard field goal by Kaskowski. Allen instead, a little pooch punt. It goes out of bounds near the five. Well, what you got to say about the Houston defense, especially so far, is they're getting their good players, their impact players. They're moving them around, putting them in positions to let them make plays. We see the two pass rushers. A.J. Boyer made an interception. And yeah, Merciless has a sack and a half in this game. You know, that now gives him a total of six and a half sacks, and this being his just his third postseason game ever. Had five through the first two. And Brady is not liking the way this game is going right now, even well, though his team's up a point. Well, it's frustrating. Hard to get in rhythm what they want. Frustration, of course. They're not used to it. I said earlier, Bill O'Brien, he says, well, we can handle three and out as long as we don't turn it over. And, and I say that line one more time. The Patriots, they think it's a funeral when they don't score, go down and score or get first downs. And high expectations, rightly so. Well, the Texans must be careful but at this Houston end of the field at the four. Jim, I was just going to say the Houston defense has been aggressive and winning the physical battle against the Patriots offense here. It's Miller. Trying to give him a little room. It's near the seven. Lamar Miller signed in the offseason from Miami. A young man who went to high school in Miami, college at the University of Miami, first four years in the league, Miami Dolphins. Well, we he, visited with him last night. He was ready for uh, to try something a little different. Yep, he was. He said the coaches, the job, the, all they told him all week, hey, two and three yard runs are big. Do not hesitate. Lower your head. Get in there. He's, so far, he's done that. Signed him on the same day in March. They signed Osweiler to the rich contract. Second and six. And again, Miller. Just outside the 10. Malcolm Brown on the tackle. Good job so far here. This Texans offense, they got to, their confidence has to be high compared to what they've done up here before. Brock Osweiler, 13 of 19, a touchdown. Third and three. Loads up the right side with receivers, looks that way. Now, down the middle, and Ninkovic very nearly came up with the theft. Wow, a lot of people in the middle of the field that time. Might have got away with one. We play quarterback looking down the middle. There it is. You watch it. Going to break back out. Ninkovic did a good job of reading the quarterback's eyes and reaching up and Knocking it down. Leckler, the all-time NFL leader in gross average. Needs a big one here. Not a lot of hang time. So Edelman and a flag down. That's a block in the back. There's 
Nikovic who has a sack in the game and nearly came up with an interception. So Houston's going to manage to change field position here because of the apparent penalty coming up on the Patriots. During a return, illegal block in the back. Number 18 to the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down. And again, it's on Slater this time, the Pro Bowler. Exceptional special teamer, but that'll back up New England back near the 30. Thursday, February 2nd on CBS, one detective plays by the rules, another breaks them. From the producers of CSI, a whole new day begins, training day, premiering Thursday, February 2nd. Only CBS. They mark it at the 33. And this is what New England's possession chart looks like. That's been some tough sledding at times. Still making some big plays. Let's don't forget this Houston defense. You said it. Lowest total yards. That makes them one. Second in the league against the pass. So it's not like it's always easy pickings going against his defense. And Lewis. Quick contact at the line by Merciless. Well, talking about Merciless. That's what he's been. He's had an outstanding night so far. Put him over the center. What a tough matchup that is for Andrews. Makes Tom Brady to get out of the pocket and causes a sack. And then we have the two best pass rushers back side by side. How about that spin move for the other sack on Tom Brady? So Romeo Cornell being creative. He's done this, moving his guys around to give him a chance to make plays. Second and nine as we get near the three-minute mark. Take the hand off to Hogan and a quick hit on Brady this time by Clowney. Well, they're going to do some talking on the sidelines about pass protection and who's picking up some of these guys. And that time, Clowney inside, number 90. Boy, just so quick. Well, you don't get many clean hits on Brady like that during the course of a season. We've seen probably more here now in all right. the games we've done together. And again, you're extolling all the... The great things this defense has done without J.J. Watts, who did not make the trip here. He's back home rehabbing the back. He hasn't played since the New England game in September. Third and nine, Brady pointing to a player down the field and throws it to Edelman. How about that? Signaling and able to get the defense out of position. They beat Jackson on the play for 48 yards. Well, it's the pass protection. That's what it all starts with. Here's Edelman. He's just going to work all over the field. Goes all the way across. Sees Brady. He's waved down the field. The coverage is there. Edelman extends his arm. Gets away with a little push off that time. Hey, do that. But the pass protection. Tom Brady once again, man to man, throwing it deep. On third and nine, they'll go for the big one and get it. Lewis. He is met by Clowney after a couple. They may not run another play before the two-minute warning. Julian Edelman has now the most receptions in New England postseason history. Coming off a 98-catch regular season. Got 70 for his career in playoff action. And we got the two-minute warning. With the Patriots in the red zone, leading at 14-13. You're watching the NFL playoffs on CBS. Both teams have all of their timeouts. Two minutes to go, second quarter. And the Patriots driving from the 16, second and eight. Lewis on the outside, now cuts back to the 10. It'll be third and two. Getting down here on that long play, 48 yards to Edelman. Well, Tom Brady waved him down the field. Did Edelman push off to get some room there to make that catch? I'm sure the Houston Texans, well, not sure. They were. They were complaining that he pushed off. But it was not seen. But what really stood out that time, Tom Brady had been under pressure a lot. That time he had so much time to throw, he waved him down there, made the big play. Under center, third and two. His back throws to Hogan. He was open. That separation on Bouye. Bouye sees him now get first and goal to go after that seven-yard completion. Really good job, Chris Hogan. Speed out, lined up in tight. You're expecting him to go across the field. He breaks it out and... Well, what a pickup he's been. You know, the Chris Hogan played lacrosse at Penn State. Didn't have any scholarship, major scholarships offers to play football, but 
excelling here in professional football. Amendola in for the first time. He's been out the last four games with an ankle injury in a slot to the right. May have something set up for him. Oh, he's Brady looking around for options. They're all covered up all kinds of time. And now he's going to take off. And he is hit at the one by Clowney. Clowney would stays back, but what they're trying to do, they want to get it to Deion Lewis. They faked it, they were going to take him out, and they're ready for it. And look at Jadeveon Clowney at the goal line. He's just standing there looking around, playing defense, and then he attacks Tom Brady, keeps him out of the end zone. I think Brady's seen enough of Clowney in this first half. Boy, I mean, can he? His hustle is unbelievable when you're watching play. Second and goal. Take to Blunt. Over to Devlin, and does he fight for it? They keep him out. That was Dent who came over to support Pleasant, and they kept him short. And they're going to be about a foot away. This is where Brady loves to go quarterback sneak on so many occasions coming up. Well, that's when it's a quick play. They're going to take their time here and think about it, but I am. New England first team timeout. I'm a pretty sure they're going to go for the touchdown out. here. Well, it's third down. Of course they will. Well, 19 seconds to go with the timeout called by the Patriots. And the Verizon halftime report is coming up. Can't wait to hear what the guys back in New York have to say about this. JB, Tony and Coach, Barton Boomer. First half highlights and analysis. Verizon halftime report. So he's still got two timeouts. So if they, you know, if they do want to run it and even go for it on fourth down or whatever, they've got couple of timeouts in their hip pocket. They're only inches away. And Merciless, he has been some force in this half. Now look at big Vince Wilford right over the ball. 11-year Patriot. Now with the Texans. Here's the third and goal. Blunt. Blunt is stopped and stopped on a second effort. Well, that, that, that time it was... D.J. Reader that gets in there and helps make the play, and this will be interesting. It's not just inches now. You know, it's a yard out and 10 seconds to go and another timeout here. Blunt, who had 18 rushing touchdowns during the regular season, an all-time Patriots single season. Mark led the league, and they're going to go field goal. I, I think that's the, that's the right decision. I would kick the field goal really tough. How big was this for Houston? Well, it's huge. You know, I mean, of course it is. To stop them to a, hold them to a field goal when they're down that close and the tackle, you know, keep them one inch short of the goal line, and Bill Belichick has seen enough of this defense. They need to go in halftime, make some adjustments. Standing next to his special teams coach, Izzo. 19 yards, Guskowski knocks it through. But Houston buckles down at the one, makes a couple of big hits. Clowney kept Brady out, and then Dent helped keep Devlin away. And then they stopped Blunt, who had a second effort attempt, and that was thwarted also. And then the Verizon halftime report, though, it cannot be stopped. It is coming up in just a short while here. Seven seconds to go before halftime with all the guys in the studio. I'm sure they're going to want to talk about what just happened there. Yeah, well, it was a great series there at the end for this Houston defense. And just to, they talked about, Tackling LeGarrette Blunt, what it Clowney said is like tackling a defensive end. He's so yeah. big, but they are around him. And you look at the game summary, passing yards for the Patriots. When Tom Brady hits passes. They've been for big, big yards. But Texans really emotionally, Jim, as you watch them, of course, they've made some plays in this game. That always gets you emotionally fired up. But I think after what happened here 16 weeks ago, they've heard it all. Like Bill O'Brien said to us last night, he goes, everybody thinks we're like a terrible football team. He doesn't understand that just the national media and all that you know, playoffs two straight years. And I think, you know, look, the... Switching of quarterbacks, the struggles of the offense is why that perception is out there. Got to give a nod to Clowney because after the Lewis kick return for the touchdown, suddenly it's a it's a lightning bolt, 14 to three lead, and Clowney showed I wouldn't say it was frustration, but leadership on the sideline and tried to rally everyone 
to get them to snap out of it. And this team has responded. Big games. Stars got to help you win it. Kostowski puts it on the ground and Fuller fields it. Denver's there to beat him at the 35. Time runs out on the half. Yeah, just think of the first half real quick, though. Osweiler has to be happy about the way he played, and your two big stars on defense have made a lot of plays, so that's what they needed, and they got, got from their football team here in the first half. All right, Tracy, down to you. Coach, you said your defense needs to come up big to have success tonight, and you need to limit the turnovers. You've done both. What has impressed you most about what you've seen here? The guys are playing hard, you know, but we got a lot of football left. They're a great team. Uh, our guys are going to come out and battle. That was a big stop there at the end uh, to uh, hold them to a field goal there. So we're, we're fighting hard, and that's what our team's all about. You're within four. No one gave you a chance. So how do you pull off this upset? What do you need to see from your team in the second half? Yeah, we only care about what we what we think about in that locker room. We don't really care what anybody else thinks. So we're going to go in there, make some adjustments, try to come out here and play as good as we can. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jim. The man from Andover, Massachusetts, has to love the effort by his Texans in that first half. But the Patriots lead it. 17-13 at the intermission. New England will receive the third quarter kick after deferring at the start. Back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The Patriots about to receive the second half kickoff. Uh, first, let's take a look at the winning play of the first half presented by H&R Block. Brady's been under pressure as merciless with a sack and a half. They've actually knocked him down, Phil, four times in that first half, two of them being sacks. And there are the first half numbers with the decisive edge and time of possession to Houston. Two turnovers, that's a big story. Patriots making mistakes that you don't normally see them make. Nope, and I think the big thing for the, when you look at it, no turnovers by the Houston Texans. That was a, a must 100 percenter Bill O'Brien told us. There's Lewis, who had that first ever Patriot postseason kick return for a touchdown, only the next kick return coughing it up that led to a Houston touchdown. Takes a knee. All right, your observations on the first half overall. Okay, well, you know, the game of football, it's about being physical. That's usually who wins the game. And the, the team that was the most physical in the first half was the Houston Texans. You know, I, even though they fell down 14-3, to their body language was great, and they, they just out-hit the New England Patriots. And we'll see, mm -hmm. do the Patriots, can they find an answer for that inside rushing of Merciless and Clowney? That'll be a big key here to the second half. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments on each side particularly how to contain the likes of Merciless and Clowney when the Patriots have the football. They'll take this first snap third quarter from the 25. Great pass, almost intercepted. Boyer jumped in front of Floyd. Oh, he dropped it. He read it the whole time. It was a quick, he read the three-step drop, and A.J. Boyer really such a great technique guy to the outside. Oh, he, stayed, he had inside technique. And Floyd didn't knock it down. He just dropped the pass. Boyer, who last week on seven targets in his direction, did not allow a catch. Hey, he was thrown on 89 times this year and gave up only one touchdown. That was to Tyrell Williams of San Diego. And Blunt meets up with McKinney after a gain of two. Let's uh, hear what else was being said at halftime. Tracy. Well, Jim, I caught up with Bill Belichick, and I asked him, how do you establish an offensive rhythm in the second half? He said, we need to do a better job in everything we do. I said, how about the 19 yards rushing? He said, everything. I said, how about it? the uncharacteristic penalties, the turnovers? He just looked at me and said, everything. Mm. They need to improve in all that they are doing right now, Jim. They've got third and eight. They've got the quarterback in trouble on the run, and that pass incomplete. Had a lot of heat behind it trying to connect with Lewis. That was Cushing chasing after Brady along with Clowney. Eddie Pleasant on the coverage and a three and out to start the third quarter. Well, once again, inside pressure. They're trying to do it. And then Cushing comes inside, gets away from Shaq Mason, the right guard. 
and then the pressure continues and a lot of the first half starts here in a second. Ryan Allen boots it, spiral kick it is to Fuller, the rookie from Notre Dame, who has speed. He's got about a 16 yard return. Five yard punt. Now Osweiler and the Texans come onto the field. Osweiler 13 of 20 in that first half, only 83 yards. The touchdown pass to Fedorowicz, no turnovers. Yep, no turnovers, the big thing. And you know, look, I thought his decision making was good. Only once or twice, well, really once the pass over the middle, it could have been trouble, but you know, he looks confident, he looks loose. I think he's seeing it well. The big thing is continue when the Patriots play man-to-man -man coverage. We still have yet to see these wide receivers for Houston beat the tight man-to-man -man coverage. He did have a start as a Bronco against New England last season and beat the Patriots in a game in Denver in overtime. And look at Miller. Get into the secondary. Lamar Miller peels off a big run. Gain of 17. Yeah, what a job. Goes inside and breaks it outside. And once again, Suofilo, the left guard, along with Mance, the center. What a good job. The double team. Lamar Miller. Over 1,000 yards this year. Showing no effects of the 31 carries of last week, huh? Yep, nearly 1,100 yards on the season, even missing the last two games. That was the longest play for the Texans tonight. 17-yard run. They fake to him here. Flowers coming after Osweiler and the pass at the knees of Miller incomplete. Having good play action fake. Haven't heard the name Trey Flowers much tonight. Trey Flowers, best pass rusher for this New England defense. And then Hightower came in for good measure. Second and ten. Best hit of the night they've gotten on the Houston quarterback. Miller. Nikovic has hold of him. He's able to get it down for a gain of about seven, near the 40. Well, they got to love what they're seeing from the offensive line. Just the... Pushing, winning the physical battle. Uh, they talked about, hey, we need two and three yard runs. That time they just kind of mushed the pile for seven yards. They rushed for 72 as a team versus only 21 for New England. Jonathan Grimes has come in for third and three. Grimes a bigger, more physical back. Also good in the passing game for Houston. Here's Osweiler, and there's a Patriot right on him. And Noy deflecting the pass, and Leckler comes out to boot. And Noy gets the pressure inside. Boy, just like we, any time the ball gets hit, yeah, it, it is a pass. You wondered, okay, did, was it knocked out of his hand? No. So Leckler. From the 41. On a time, did exactly what he hoped to do. A gentleman with the fair catch. Near the nine, 31 yard boot. Pins the Patriots deep. Patriots second series of the second half at the 10 yard line. Brady drops back near the goal line. Throws it to Edelman. Makes the catch. Made an adjustment. Jackson was turned around, and that's twice Jackson's given up big plays. Well, what, what can you do? Uh, Tom Brady, under pressure, just throws it high and soft, takes another big hit. That was merciless. And Edelman has outside technique, breaks it out, and Brady throws it just straight up in the air, and it comes straight down. What a anticipating or anticipated throw by Tom Brady. How about how many times in this game the Patriots have gone down the field? They're, they're almost forcing the two. They're, they're, going, they're playing tight man-to-man -man coverage. They've had a 48-yard pass play, 45-yard pass play, 30-yard pass interference call that went their way. 
That one went for 26 as Brady fires it. Turning around to make the catch is Edelman again. And in two plays, they go from the 10 to the 50. Well, what they're saying, well, if you're going to play us this way, they're trying to make them pay for it, Jim. And they have with these long completions down the field and some incredible throws by Tom Brady. That was another one. Nice back shoulder throw. He was covered by Boye. Ball replacement purpose. Here's Blunt. He's got a running lane, and he takes off down to the 35. There is a penalty marker down near the 50. Clowney feels certain it's going against New England. Holding. Number 77 offense. 10 yard penalty remains. First down. Well, Nate Solder, the left tackle. I was going to say, what a block by him. Gives the running lane. There he is. They called it a hold on Solder against McKinney. And instead of the football being near the Houston 35, spot foul takes it back to the 42, where it'll be a first and 18. Tough call. Again, Brady, play action, dropping deep, throwing it deep, and finding Hogan, wow. left alone by Moore. It's an excellent job by Chris Hogan, just the head fake, the body fake, the feet. On the outside, watch him go in, break it out. Beautiful route, Chris Hogan making some big plays tonight. Yep, he's had a 21-yard catch right there, earlier a 22-yard touchdown uh, catch. One year of college football at Monmouth University in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. His 22-yard catch led to a touchdown on the next play to Deion Lewis in the first quarter. First down. Swings it back over to Edelman. Picking him apart on this series. As the Patriots try to land the spot in the conference championship game for what would be the record alone. Sixth time currently sharing it with the John Madden Kenny Stabler days of the Raiders back in the mid 70s It's Lewis Switching directions tumbles, but has a first down Well what they've done, you know by completing some of those passes deep down the field Jim it made the coverage back off and once you back off and give them room underneath then Tom Brady's gonna throw those short passes and pick you apart First down at the 26. They picked up the pace here, and they're connecting again near the 19 this time to Edelman, who goes over 100 yards. Yep. The previous catch, he's now got six grabs for 108. By picking up the pace, they keep this Houston defense from doing some of the uh, different things and a variety of defensive schemes that we saw in the first half. And, of course, it gets them tired. And the advantage goes to the offensive line. But once again, the coverage was off. Another easy completion for Tom Brady. Five for five on this drive. Second and three from the 19. James White seeing little action. He's in the backfield. Brady's pass tipped and incomplete. Tipped there by McKinney as both Hogan and Devlin were in the area for New England. We have third and three for Brady coming up as we take a look at tonight's nationwide sky cam. You see Amendola coming into the huddle. Touchdown. Well, James White out the backfield. We've seen it so many times over the last couple years. But Nardrick McKinney just not fast enough to run with him. Here he comes out of the backfield, down the sideline. Here's McKinney trying to chase him. And calling on some help here from Moore, who's uh, not anywhere close to there in time. McKinney gets beat on this one. 
Well, that time, that was man-to-man -man coverage, and he was anticipating a quick route in the flat or coming across the middle. Brady's 57th career postseason touchdown pass. Kaskowski's extra point is good. That's a 90-yard drive. It's the best that New England's looked all night. Nine plays, 90 yards. White finishes it off. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by the all-new Civic Hatchback from Honda. A look at the Boston skyline 30 miles away. There's a new film about the great city of Boston. The tragedy suffered here back in April of 2013 during the bombing of the Boston Marathon. Patriots Day starring one of the Patriots biggest fans, Mark Wahlberg. At many of the games, not here tonight, but I'm nope. sure he's been... Uh, Got to be happy about what he's seen. Well, um, here in the last couple minutes, maybe yeah. not before that. No, I mean, it was rough before, but look, they were still winning, but the Patriots... Running backs, always a big part of their pass game. Twice they got, they got them isolated. Two touchdown passes by Brady. And a touchback earned by Gaskowski. Rob Gronkowski is the Patriots nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide. His impact off the field is making a noticeable difference in the community with regular school visits, continual eagerness to spread some cheer. Rob, a very deserving candidate for the prestigious honor where three finalists will be announced during next Sunday's NFC title game and the winner to be named at the NFL Honors Award Show February 4th 8 Eastern on Fox first and 10 and the Texans down 11 there's a completion to Hopkins out of the 40, a gain of 15. Third catch of the game for Hopkins. Good play action fake by Brock Osweiler. They're going to pick up the pace here a little bit, Phil. No huddle. Miller off the right side. And he's sandwiched there after a two-yard pickup. Miller 15 carries for 67 yards. Really a big drive for this Houston Texans team, I think, to give their defense some rest on the sideline, let them regroup, but to stay in this game. And the one good thing they've already done, at least they changed field position. They have to punt. They should be able to punt it inside the 20. Second and eight. It was underneath. That's a catch for about four to Miller. We were talking about how the Patriots are going for a sixth straight appearance in the AFC Championship game. The Texans have never gotten past the divisional round in two previous attempts. Road losses at New England on 1-13-13 when they lost by 13. That's what they put up on the board here tonight. And a loss in a divisional round game at Baltimore. Seven and a half to go in quarter number three and a third and four. Osweiler gets intercepted. McCourty saw it coming and jumped right in front of Hopkins. He did. He saw it. Reads the quarterback. We told you already he was the next corner and really can break on the ball and sees the offense like a quarterback. First turnover of the night committed by the Texans. First Texans giveaway in seven quarters of the postseason. Osweiler intercepted. Something that plagued him during the regular season when he was intercepted 16 times. He had been clean since coming back, getting the job back when Savage went out with a concussion against Tennessee. Well, this, the throw wasn't quite on target, not hard enough. Meanwhile, Brady 
Picked him apart last time, and that one off the hands of Bennett. Well, let's look at the interception we saw, Jim. Here's DeAndre Hopkins going to go here. Here's McCourty. Watch him as he just watches the quarterback. And he sees it, and look how fast he breaks as Osweiler winds up to throw it and just gets to the ball so quick. You know, one thing about Brock Osweiler, and they've talked about it, they got to speed up his delivery a little bit. Man, just, just not enough speed on the football really allowed Devin McCourty to get over there and make the interception. As he talks things over with George Godsey, one of five former Patriot coaches on that Houston sideline, second and ten, and Brady well protected this time. Now Merciless comes after him, forcing the throw away. Well, he wants to throw it deep. Once again, watch. Everybody's just going to go down the field deep, and there's nobody open. And Tom Brady, man, he was under so much pressure in the first half. A three-man rush, nowhere to throw it, so he has to throw it away. Merciless before he started chasing after Brady wow. absolutely flattened Deion Lewis. Well, they're trying a little bit of everything. They've shown some different blitzes. A three-man rush, that didn't work. White comes into the backfield, third and ten. Open. It's Edelman. Boy, just getting away from Kareem Jackson. Now, you know, what a difference in the outside throw. And I know, look, I'm not Brock Oswald. It's not Tom Brady. Edelman in the slot sells it, and then it's just a shot to the outside. You know, running backs, receivers, you see their legs get fresh in a week off. And, you know, same thing happens to a quarterback, Jim. You get a week off and you can get a little more zip on the football. And you know, Tom Brady, when given time, he's got a lot of zip on the ball tonight. Yeah, so they've come out throwing in this second half. That's six completions of 20-plus. Three of them have been thrown in the direction of Kareem Jackson. That last big one on a third and 10 for 26 yards. Clowning giving chase. And Brady has seen enough of him. And he throws it away. Brady still went to the ground, and he falls a second time. He's not happy about when that hit occurred. Let's see what happens. It's, it's the one-step rule. He was within one step of Tom Brady. Brady not happy that the... The knockdown just continued on. But no flag, second and ten. Again, pressure. This time it was by DJ Reader. There is a flag deep in the secondary, inside of the five. Is it on Jackson? Yeah, this might be on Floyd. Pass interference, number 14 offense, 10-yard yes, penalty, still second down. Top of the screen, number 14. Now yeah, it's definitely pushing his arms, extending them, Michael Floyd. Easy call. I know one thing, coming out, Jim, you said it. All these passes and everything, this Houston defense, everybody's got their hands on their hips. Houston takes the penalty instead of third and ten because the Patriots would have been in field goal range should nothing have happened on a third down. Drop them back to the 40 instead on second and 20. And Brady again. All kinds now just standing there and Edelman this time looking around. To no avail. Well, I'll tell you, there's the officials are taking a verbal beating tonight on the field. Mm. I mean, everybody's complaining about every play, it looks like. How many games have you seen Brady, though, take a beating like this see, physically? Take, yeah, it's, he's taking a lot of hits tonight. You no know what question. it reminds me of? This is the last time he played in the playoff game at the AFC Championship game against Denver. Yeah, good, good example. But the big thing is, he's making tremendous throws under pressure tonight. It's been the difference 
I think, in this football game. He's thrown for 145 yards on third down, which he has here, third and 20. And that little pass, and this might be, is going to be rule of completion, the difference between maybe a field goal attempt and a punt. Because it would be about a 51-yard attempt. Amendola, uh, that ball came out. Yep, it's going to be incomplete. And now they rule it on the field incomplete. So the drive bogs down with that offensive pass interference call against Floyd. One of the reasons backs him up. It ends the drive at the 40. Fuller standing back at the 10. He did run a punt back early in the season for a touchdown. Allen tries to angle this one. And look who's down there. Matthew Slater. Who's heading to another Pro Bowl this year. And the winner of the Bart Starr Award this month. Yep. One of the best special teams players in history. For his contributions on and off the field. Award that his father, a Hall of Famer, also had won in the past. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. And by Mobile Strike. Download and play now. Free from the App Store. The Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge serving as the northern entrance to and from Boston. Meanwhile, down the road, Foxborough, Texans. Backed up here at the two. Going to have Osweiler throw from the end zone. And dropped by Fedorowicz, who would have had, in all likelihood, a first down. The Patriots were blitzing there with Logan Ryan. Yep, Logan Ryan was coming on the blitz. They had it picked up. Fedorowicz uncovered in the middle of the field and drops it. You know, you're in a position like this. So just Your margin of error is really slim. So you need plays like that. Can't let them get away from you. Got a few snow flurries. For the first time in this game, second and ten. Osweiler had gone a long stretch over several games without committing a turnover. Must be careful here. Going across the middle. What a catch. What a Hopkins pulls it down near the 20. What a catch is right. Also a good throw. That one did have some zip on it. Yep, that time he really caught it on the inside. I like what they do with... The Andre Hopkins, number 10, going across. They switch him outside. He plays the slot. That time, he was the third receiver inside to give him more room to make plays because he is their number one weapon. Ah, two Patriots right there to greet him at the line of scrimmage, including a Landon Roberts along with Allen Branch. Tomorrow, an invitation for a unique tour inside the West Wing for President Obama's last appearance on 60 Minutes. You won't want to miss what he has to say. That's tomorrow, only CBS. Okay, since the Houston touchdown to Fedorowicz, this is what they've done. Three punts and a pick. Got a second and 10 from their own 21. Look at the 22. who goes again underneath with Hightower right in the back of Miller holds him to five you know such an underrated part of this Patriots football team and you know I notice it we talk about it Matt Patricia defensive coordinator is just their their coverage guys you know they can play aggressive and have linebackers roam and be free because these corners and the safety's all very good in man-to-man -man coverage. Osweiler only 126 yards passing on 28 attempts. That's less than five yards per attempt. And he's calling timeout. As the play clock was down to a second. Timeout. So the Patriots, particularly offensively on that one 90-yard drive in the third quarter, looking a whole lot different than they did in the first half. But what about the Texans and their offense in the second half? Well, the Texans, you know, it's kind of, we, we say it, it's just can they find a way to beat 
man-to-man -man coverage and get somebody open down the field. Now, we've watched the, the New England Patriots do it about six times here tonight, right? Uh, with big throws down the field by Tom Brady. We're not seeing those from the Texans because we do not see the separation by the wide receivers. They have not had a pass play that has gone for 20 yards in this game. But they just need five on this snap for a first. Here it comes. Sheard shakes off him, and Osweiler runs for a first down and a whole lot more. Brock Osweiler with an 18-yard scramble. And the Texans, remember this drive started all the way back near the one. You see Sheard forces him up, and this is an excellent job. You know, just feel it, see it, play it. That's what he talked about. Just be a little more natural on the field, and he has moved around more. Ever since he came, he got back into the lineup, good job scrambling there on man-to-man -man coverage. It's the longest rush in the game by either team. Miller pauses. And flags come in. Did a little Le'Veon Bell type hesitation there at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was a little bit, yes. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, number 99 defense. Five yard penalty automatic, first down. And of course, Le'Veon Bell and the Steelers will be at Kansas City tomorrow night in the last of the four divisional round games. There's 99 right in the middle of your screen, got the hands up there. Vince Valentine. Yeah, pushing back the head and helmet of Suafilo. Double move, you know, they, these receivers are being pressed. Can somebody, they tried a couple double moves tonight, could not get open. Come on. Now a snap in New England territory. Miller got a hand on him early, Hightower, able to fall forward for a couple. And, well, tomorrow, Green Bay at Dallas on Fox. And then the Steelers and the Chiefs on NBC. Tomorrow is the 50-year anniversary of Super Bowl One. Here's a look at the AFC brackets. And again, the winner here takes on the winner of Pittsburgh, Kansas City. There, you see Atlanta already advancing with its win over Seattle. But tomorrow, the 50-year anniversary of the first Super Bowl. And how about both the participants from Super Bowl One are playing on that 50-year anniversary to the day. Green Bay and Kansas City. Second and eight. Look out. Swiler gets walloped from behind by McClellan. Never had a chance. So many different guys. Uh -oh. Hey, the ball is out and running with it is Chung. Patriots think that it was a fumble. Flag is down and there's utter chaos on the field. Well, the ball went forward, I thought. That Brock Osweiler got hit as he was throwing, but released the ball. Now there seems to be... During the run back... We have illegal substitution on New England. Players on the bench came on the field. Five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Tommy, I ruled it. Now, turn that mic off. First down. Who? Yeah, as you see, here is the hand going forward. Yeah, it's an incomplete pass. He did not lose control of the football before the arm was going forward. Watch it. You can still see he has the grip. Stays on it. Shea McClellan playing in his first playoff game. Got to be pretty exciting. Pressure in the quarterback. I think the ruling on the field, and I think the officials may have ruled it on the field, a fumble, because now they, they're signaling. I see the, the, pa the Patriots' offense has come on to the field. 
So it's a booth review because the ruling on the field was that it was a fumble. Was it called a yeah, fumble? It was called a turnover, so they'll have to review it. Said there was chaos. In the end, I think it'll be Houston football. Again, the call on the field was a fumble recovered by New England. But After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is changed to an incomplete pass. Please set the game clock to 216, third down on the 45-yard line. And the penalty, there is no foul for illegal substitution. So the penalty is waved off. And think about that. That came out of his hand. It wasn't a tight spiral, but it was still spinning. Yeah, no surprise question. that anyone would have thought that was a fumble. But anyway, they get it right. It's third and eight. Osweiler dancing around and for the first time goes deep to the end zone. It is dropped. Would have been a touchdown for Fuller. He's had problems holding on to the football all season and that would have been six. Nice formation. They come out, they get him in a bunch formation. And Fuller gets a free release down the field. And it is a perfect throw. Drops it straight down by Brock Osweiler. Wow, what a game changer. No kidding. I mean, he just dropped it right in there. Right between his hands. Absolutely got to make that catch. That was punt fielded fair catch again at the 10. The last time Edelman made a fair catch at the 10, the Patriots went 90 yards in nine plays earlier in this quarter. Well, you can see your favorite NFL players show off all of their impressive talents in strength, speed, and more in the new Pro Bowl Skills Showdown, Thursday, January 26th, 7 Eastern Time. And don't miss the Pro Bowl presented by Aquafina, Sunday, January 29th, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Well, you've been trying all night, trying to get a big play. You finally get the chance, forward to the top. They're shading DeAndre Hopkins, so nobody's deep in the middle of the field. And Osweiler makes the perfect throw. There's Lewis. Makes out of an ankle tackle and gets ahead to the 14 for four. You said it live, Jim. Finally, they get a chance to go deep down the field, and the pass was perfect. And Fuller, their first-round pick, taken 20th overall out of Notre Dame. He got off to this fast start with 100-yard performances the first two weeks of the season and then was uh, hampered by a knee and was really not the same player the rest of the year. Second and six. Quickly to Floyd. And Michael Floyd breaks through a tackle for the first down. He got away from Boye. Tracy. Yeah. Jim, an injury on the Patriots sideline. Wide receiver Chris Hogan is dealing with a thigh injury. He was in and then out of the locker room. He has a heating pad on it. He's been rubbing a golf ball to try and massage it. He is out for now on the sideline. Well, Hogan's had, uh, Tracy, he's had a good game here with four catches for 95 yards. First down off the Floyd effort. Brady steps up, lofts it, caught. That's Bennett. And again, McKinney in coverage. They're taking advantage of that matchup. That's a good matchup. For the Patriots, so many matchup problems uh, to, oh. for these linebackers. They try to play man-to-man -man coverage. They called it incomplete. Incomplete. Yep, never got a hold up before he went out of bounds. But yeah. once again. See it clearly this, from here. Yes, comes out. Hmm. Boy, that, that looked a whole lot better. Here's Brady, fires it, and it's intercepted on the deflection. It's Howe with the football, and Tom Brady, after throwing only two interceptions in 432 regular season attempts, has been picked off twice tonight. Bernard McKinney, the linebacker, just stands there. I don't think Tom Brady ever sees him. Number 55, right in the middle of your screen. And he breaks on the football, which leads to the interception. Both interceptions coming off deflections. Brady had 
all season long only been picked up by Deshaun Shedd of Seattle and Eric Weddle of Baltimore. But this feisty Texans defense comes up with a couple tonight. Well, what they did is they took McKinney out of coverage. 30th career postseason interception ties Brett Favre. Well, he's been in so many games. But they took McKinney out of the pass defense and let him stand in the middle and just read the quarterback. And it led to an interception. Okay, final minute of the third quarter. Toss. Blue. And Alfred Blue. Has a three-yard carry, his first handle tonight. Good switch up by the Texans that led to that interception, though. This time they split out blue wide to the left. They empty out the backfield. over to the near side to Hopkins and Butler's there trying to strip the football they say he was down ball did come out but they rule him down on what was the final play of the third quarter 24 13 New England back after this message and a word from your local station in that last frame seven points put on the board by the Patriots James White at the end of a 90-yard touchdown drive, calling it in from 19 out. But we start the fourth, Jim Nance and Phil Sims, Tracy Wilson and Jay Feely here at Gillette Stadium, the winner of this game to go on to the AFC title game next Sunday night. Third and four, and Osweiler looking down the field, and it's over the head of Brian Griffin. And they're going to go field goal, Novak. Let's get a report before the kick from Jay Feely. Well, Jim, Nick Novak kind of tweaked his back on the opening kickoff. He's been receiving treatment throughout the second half, trying to keep it loose. Could impact his distance. He made a 50-yarder in last week's game. That's his long in the playoffs. This one will be a 46. Wind moving a little to his left. Well, on the season, he never missed in the fourth quarter. 13 of 13. This is a 46-yard attempt to make it a one-score game. is good. Nick Novak brings the margin to eight. Texans put up a field goal off the interception. Well, Novak flushes it. Pretty excited about it. His reaction after he makes it. He knows how big this kick is. Playoff game gets him in into a one score game. How many times did Bill O'Brien tell us last night? We just want to get in the fourth quarter, have a chance. That's it. And that they do. Well, look, they, they, they've gotten three turnovers tonight. That's, you know, they did have one, but Tom Brady has thrown two interceptions tonight, which is what he threw the whole year. A little off target on the first one, and then he never sees McKinney. Always see in front of the receiver. That time he didn't. Yep, this is what we mentioned the whole regular season just the two and, you know th this was something we did discuss with Tom on Friday yep when we met with him in our production meeting and hey he had a lot of things to say about how fortunate he felt because so many in fact almost a harbinger of what was to, to come here tonight you know he said I, I got fortunate in that yeah, they, there weren't a lot of deflections, and you know, a lot of times you can throw a good pass, yeah. gets deflected. Goes off the receiver, they yeah. drop it, they kick it in the air. Yeah, he didn't want to take a whole lot of credit for it. He was uh, quite magnanimous about how his teammates helped him. But that's what Bill O'Brien said. We just kind of tipped some passes, and that was a big key, and their defensive line has been pretty good at it this year. Well, they've been great at it if J.J. Watt was in that defensive line. Can you imagine this defense, if they get J.J. fully recovered from the back, with what's transpired with a healthy Clowney this season, merciless emerging, they're able to re-sign, say, Boye. I yep. mean, this, this defense will yep. be some force next year. Well, they're missing John Simon, too. Yeah, he's, he made it. plays early in the year. Toss to Blunt. 
He's barely been a factor here tonight. You would have thought he was one of only three rushers to have a 100-yard performance against Houston during the season. And so far tonight, five carries, eight yards for Blunt. Well, they got big Vince Wilfork inside. And, you know, even though if you probably look at the stat sheet, Davion Clowney, his numbers are probably not great, but just that time he forced the runner back inside and then everybody else makes the tackle. I will say this about Blunt. He missed some time in practice this week because he was under the weather. He was ill. Here's Brady. Stepping into the throw and Lewis. That quickness he can wow. just fly in short burst and there's a personal flag down. foul. Roughing the passer, number 90, a late hit, 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, Brady didn't get it the last time Clowney caught up with him, but this time he does. Yeah, that was Clowney who comes in and makes a hit way after the ball is let go. His head uh, ricocheted off the, the ground a little more violently than the Patriot faithful would like to see. Well, he's taking you. We've talked about it. He's taking some big hits, made some big throws, and how about that throw to Lewis? And how quick he can catch it when he catches it, how fast he accelerates and just picks up extra yards. Always a factor when you play the Patriots. Yards right after catch, they're great at it. From the 48 of Houston with the blitz, unloads it. No one turned around. Edelman, he had Jackson on him. Jackson turned around. He could have made a play on the football. But again, Brady had to absorb some contact. Christian Covington came Covington. crashing in on him. Well, Covington hits him. Merciless is coming free. And, of course, nobody, the receiver was not ready for it. The defensive back is not going to react if the receiver is not. So, Tom Brady, we, we've seen that quite a few times tonight. Just knows he's under pressure, throws it deep down the field against somebody man-to-man. -man. Have all that weight landing on your left shoulder. Then you see oftentimes quarterbacks have a hard time being able to come off that healthy. Here he goes underneath to Edelman for just three. But for Edelman, eight catches on the on the game for 137. Well, never gets tired, Julian Edelman, when you watch him. You come watch him practice. It was, got to always remember this is a Saturday game, so Thursday, he was running all over the field. In fact, we saw him dive for a couple passes in practice. <laughs> so Houston here, big down. Keep him out of field goal range. Third and seven. Edelman unable to hold on to it. And the Texans defense able to take him off the field. Tom Brady trying to get the football to him before he runs into trouble, so he throws it real hard because he knows Kareem Jackson is coming the other way. Tom Brady knows he missed it. Ryan Allen had six of seven punts that pinned the Texans inside the 20 in the first matchup. They're trying to do the same thing here. That one that was fielded by Slater at the two earlier. That is Fuller holding on to it outside the 10. It's a one possession game. There's the Texans founder and chairman and CEO, Robert McNair. He and his wife Janice will be the host of Super Bowl 51 in a few weeks down in Houston. the time Osweiler has here. Dangerous across the middle, and it is intercepted by Ryan. Ryan with a diving grab of the pass off the deflection, and he takes it all the way to the five. Well, this one got away from Brock Osweiler. He had what he wanted. He had Hopkins going across the middle, zone coverage, nobody following him. Nobody there. The throw is too high, and he knocks it up in the air. What a catch by Logan Ryan. Look how many Patriots are in the middle of that field. Well, when you're playing this type of defense, when you play like that, you're watching the quarterback, so when he lets it go, you're going to converge. And Logan Ryan, he gets 
thrown at the second most of any corner in football. Why? Because he plays the top receivers. He plays the slot. He plays both sides outside. He's got a sack tonight. He's got an interception. First and goal. Toss to Lewis. Looking for a third touchdown on the night. Breaks a tackle and then gets smacked near the one. Reader denying him the end zone. Yep. Amendola, good block out there. Nate Solder, the left tackle. He gets out there and a little pylon cam. Well, the Texans at this end of the field right before the half made some plays, but Lewis, Lewis dives for it. I think he broke the plane, looking for a signal. There it is, touchdown. A touchdown catch, a kick return for a touchdown, and now a rush for a score. Well, good job inside. Shaq Mason, Andrews. Whitney Merciless almost gets here and stops him. They go on to win this game. You're going to be reading a lot of stories about Deion Lewis and how few people in the history of the game have ever had, if you will, some sort of cycle for touchdowns in a game. Three different ways. Didn't take long to finish it off after the Ryan interception. Guskowski knocks it through. And just like that, it's a 15 point game. Ryan set it up. Lewis, once again, smells pay dirt. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Domino's. Order online at dominoes.com. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Verizon, join a better network because better matters. 31-16, New England behind three touchdowns by Deion Lewis. Big game as well by Logan Ryan. Lewis the first in postseason history with a rush, a reception, and a return for touchdowns in one game. He came out of Pitt, where he actually broke Tony Dorsett's freshman rushing record for the Panthers with over 1,600 yards. And then he found himself there on the roster and in the backfield with a guy named LaShawn McCoy. Well, when he got his chance, he did okay. And I'll tell you, everybody forgets. I kept looking for Deion Lewis this year. Mm -hmm. He was on a tear last year with this football team until he got hurt. And it really changed who they are. Just just think if he'd have been in that backfield and running routes and running with the football during the playoffs or even during the regular season. Missed a lot of time because of that knee injury. <laughs> Miller stuffed only a gain of one. Well, they got to go a little hurry up, which they're going to try. Not that much of a hurry. Not as much as it should. What? Swiler trying to get away, but can't. That's the former first rounder, Malcolm Brown, who wrapped hold of the leg and didn't let go. Yep, Malcolm Brown over the right tackle. Chris Harris just goes inside, goes right by him. You know, known for his run stopping ability. That's the Patriots' third sack of the game. And it sets back the Texans nine yards. Look how much the Patriots have dropped back to protect the first down line all the way up at the 35. Osweiler goes underneath Hopkins, and he stopped about six yards shy of the first. Yeah, that is dull. You, you said it. See that around the league a lot. Everybody just drops back to the first down marker, make you throw it short, make the tackle. More so than you used to. Yes. You know, it, Amazing that no one figured that out long ago. There's Leckler, who came out of the same draft as a guy named Tom Brady back in 2000 and was actually drafted 
around ahead of him. He was in the fifth, Brady in the sixth. Scooping it up, Edelman. Tiptoes out at the 35. Well, Novak brought it down to a one possession game, but then the pick and the Lewis touchdown brought it back to 15. Brady under center, starting the series from the 33 with one. Taking it out for four. How about a little next gen action for us here, Phil? Next gen stats in the first half. To Debion Clowney lined up inside 31% of the time, outside. But here in the second half, we haven't seen that near as much. Why? Because of the hurry up offense is one reason by the Patriots. Here's an end around with Edelman. Oh, what a move. Plus a block out there to help him. Moore wraps him up near the 50. 13 yards on the reverse. Martell has been at number 88, leading the way. Watch him out in front. Gets a good block. Gets two blocks, really. And that's the longest running play for the Patriots tonight. It's been tough. You know, they're having a hard time blocking that defensive front when it comes to the run. Big guys there. Romeo Cornell said, look, we can't fool Tom Brady. Maybe we can fool the offensive linemen, which they have done. Play action. Brady stepping up, looking long. They've had success tonight every time, it seems, and they have it again. Oh, no, ball's out. Ball is out incomplete. More on the coverage of Edelman. Boy, we've seen quite a few of these throws tonight. Tom Brady throwing them high, dropping them right mm -hmm. in the bucket. I mean, a couple times, Jim, they've had the perfect coverage on. In other words, the exact defense you want in to be playing when the pass is thrown, and they still complete it with throws like that. Here's a end around, double reverse the other way. The Amendola into the secondary. And Tom Brady threw a block. That now is a 15-yard run. Well, they're going to take advantage of a, a situation like this where they know the defense is going to be playing all out, gambling. And Tom Brady, a little double reverse, gets out front, goes down, and gets a block on Kareem Jackson. Does that make sense? So they know the defense is going to be over-aggressive, so they're going to take advantage of that. They run two reverses. How often do you see teams run reverses three plays apart? Lewis. Ooh, he was close to breaking one before Jackson ends it after nine. What's the phrase we always hear when we do a Patriots game? What is it? Expect the unexpected. The unexpected, that's right. Second and one. And Lewis cuts back, spins, first down. Let's go to the sideline. Tracy's there. Jim, the Texans have been playing much of this drive without Bernard Rick McKinney. He seems to be hurt on the sideline. No official word from the Texans right now. They're also without their starting defensive end, G.J. Reeder, who is dealing with cramps, and Alfred Blue in the locker room being evaluated for concussion. And now add Heath to those who have injury concerns, but even more concerning is uh, Bennett is holding his, his left knee. Watch Bennett, 88. Number 88. Oh. Uh-oh. He just gave way when he yeah. was trying to pivot. Like he misstepped. I thought he got shaken up on the reverse, the first one. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by IBM. And by Jeep Grand Cherokee. For every impossible. Boy, the Bennett injury is not pretty to look at, but then he got to his feet and he actually jogged to the sideline to a huge ovation. First down, Patriots. Brady looking through the end zone and Lewis and double coverage. Pretty interesting, though. The 
We'll look at Martellus Bennett. Let's watch him 88 here. Watch his left leg. Ooh, yeah. Just hyperextends it. Mm. Yeah. This is something that you have to watch. He's still got the helmet on, but he is backed up by Matt Lingle. He's the only other tight end on the roster. Has two catches on the season. Again, Kankowski, IR, long ago. Here's a second and ten. McGrady rolls out. Get hit again as he throws it away. In fact, he shoved all the way three or four yards into the uh, Texan sideline. It was Merciless who gave him a shove. There's Bill O'Brien, his former quarterback coach, and then one year in 2011 as offensive coordinator. He stepped out of the way, and Bennett, believe it or not, is back after one missed snap. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Third and ten. Lewis comes it outside, and then the ball's on the ground. Like the Patriots were there to recover it. Huge recovery in this sense. A field goal here makes it a three-score game. Three-score game. That's two times Deion Lewis has fumbled the football. That was Tooney who recovered it, the left guard. That's Boye who stripped it. And there's Tooney, the rookie from North Carolina State. So 42-yard Guskowski field goal attempt coming up. He's made 16 straight in the postseason, as you see here. And they're going to back it up an extra yard. We'll make it 43 yards. But a timeout called by Belichick from the sideline first. Hey, I'm a pretty good lip reader. Yeah, I am too. Yes. Don't tell me what he said, though. I thought he was saying something also about the spot. Which I'm not sure what that would be about, but anyway, they're back in position here. It's a 43-yard attempt. Skowski. Puts New England up 34-16. Yep, puts them up three scores. Belichick was saying, right, no timeout there. You guys didn't take that timeout. We're hearing from Jay Feely that the issue was that he didn't feel like they had reset uh, the play clock after the running play by Lewis. So he got the officials' attention. And it looked like he got some confirmation, too. They weren't going to be charged with that timeout. Well, that big field goal takes all hope really away from the Houston Texans here. Yep. And you got to... The game, of course, is not over, but you got to say that at least the, the fight was... And their competitive level was better tonight than it was back here in week three, that's for sure. And it... Just couldn't take advantage of the opportunities. There's Heath going in. He was injured on the same play that Bennett hyperextended the knee, but missed only a snap. George Gotze talking to Brock Osweiler, what they're going to do here. Try to, of course, got to go and hurry up. And Brock Osweiler. Kind of a mixed bag here tonight, no question. Off to a good start, but missed a couple throws here that led to interceptions. Piskowski boots this one deep. Not returnable. There's Tom Savage, who had been given the job in December right. it didn't last very long before he took a hit well he suffered that concussion against the Tennessee Titans I think if this game you know not not to get on Brock Osweiler if this happened in the first half I think we would have seen Tom Savage here tonight 
Swiler again going underneath that defense, and Grimes takes it for 11. He really went deep only one time in this game, and it should have been a touchdown. Should have been, could have turned the game around. Yep. And the Patriots, uh, listen, that's all the, the Houston Texans talked about, how it's so hard to get a big play down the field against this defense. They had the one opportunity and didn't take advantage of it. And sales on it. And it's out of reach for Mumphrey. Chris Long. Playing in his first postseason game ever. Chris oh, Long. yeah. How he about that? Chris Long, number 95, hits him. Gets him from behind. Here comes Chris Long. Gets the hit. Chris Long really been a good role model. Played so hard, playing some different positions, and been in the league and had so much success. And all the other guys looking at him going, man, that was a second pick of the draft, and he's still how hard he works. Standing up from his defensive end spot on this play. Sometimes takes the handoff. He's got four. And if you watch this Patriots team, they play so many different guys on offense and defense. Guys like Chris Long, getting near the end of the career, they come up here. And, wow, they want to have success. As Bill Belichick says, hey, if you want a chance to play, come up here because they'll give anybody, if you show it on the practice field and work hard enough, they're going to give you a chance to play in the games. There's no doubt about that. His dad, Howie, won a Super Bowl in his third year in the league with the Raiders, third and five. Tossweiler has time to find the man. It's Dorowitz to the New England 42. Pick up a 17. It's a good job by Fedorowitz. Really made a nice move to get away from Patrick Chung. Inside five minutes now. And 18 points down. To Grimes. Able to make a move around Hightower, get near a first. Texans. Nine and seven for the third straight year. Winning the division. It certainly got bottled up late in the year with Indianapolis and particularly Tennessee. That's why able to get out of a jam. Looking around with the flag down. And Van Noy stands his ground. This is, could be holding. Holding. Number 74 offense. 10-yard penalty. Yep. Still first down. They've gotten him twice tonight on that. Yep. Chris Clark against Rob Ninkovich. Boy, Rob Ninkovich seems like he's been doing this for about 15 years. He's a great example. If you work hard and do the right things, you can get on the field. He was just a special teams player, practiced well, and Bill Belichick said he earned a few snaps in games years ago. Since they gave him a few snaps to reward him for all of his hard work on special teams and doing what he did in practice. And now for how many years he's been the starting outside linebacker defensive end for the Patriots. First and 20. Dumping it off the Grimes. That block is ahead. He's able to get about 15 of it back. Wayne Brown with a good block. Yeah, really good job. Defense doing a lot of games up front. Zufilo once again outside getting a good block. Second and five. Texans need to operate with a little more urgency. Zone. Middle and intercepted. It's Harmon this time. Interception number three of the second half. Well, 
tried to take a chance. You're down three scores. You got to try to force a football in there. Fedorowicz is going to go down the middle. Overthrow leads to an interception. A little double move, not fooled once again, though. Patrick Chung was all over the route. And you know, you talk about what well, you want them to go faster. Hard to go fast against the Patriots defense because they line up and do so many things on the defensive side. Well, it's Ryan Griffin on the Barbara Fedora wins. It was not. Well, Texan fans are saying we've seen this movie this season. This is what has caused a lot of unrest down in Houston. Yes, it has, and it will continue to. We saw it's like a recurring theme in the playoff swarm. It was last year against Kansas City, and you know, a tough ending here tonight for Brock Osweiler, and the way they wanted to play. Keep it simple, not take chances. They got the turnovers. But a couple missed throws turned the game around. Boy, they went to the locker room at halftime with momentum, even though they were trailing. The second half, a replay of some of the downtimes on the year as Blunt breaks one. Finally tripped up by Moore. They'll be able to run this down to the two-minute warning unless Houston wants to stop it. 18-yard run here by Blunt. Well, just a terrific block by the left guard at time. Tooney, the rookie. Blunt cuts it back and gets a little frustration out of himself there. Get the good run finally. Two minutes left. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Coming up the Subway Post Game Show. JB and the team. Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. Highlights and analysis from this game and the earlier game today. And there's Vince Wilford. And what very possibly could be his last game. He's been hinting at retirement. We met with him last night. Sure kind of sounds like it to me. This was before the game. 11 years here. He'd always come out and kiss Robert Kraft, Patriots owner, before the game once. And then after Myra Kraft passed away, he would kiss him twice. Kiss him twice, yeah. So, but he's a lot he's, of good years he had up yes, here, of he course. Did. Two Super Bowl titles, and really just a great, great effort by the Patriots here in the second half. Houston could sustain that effort we saw from them from the first half. It's gonna be a Tough offseason for Brock Osweiler, too. You know, come, he was so positive last night, off to a good start. And, you know, in this league, you just and you can't miss some throws. And a couple missed throws. Had a big drop, too, by Fuller. And then his coach coming back to his home area, raised in the outskirts of Boston. Five years he served as an assistant here. There have been all these stories that have started to surface at the end of the year that he may not be back next year, even though... Robert McNair has uh, refuted that. He says there's no chance I'm firing him. He'll be back next year. And he's the, uh, again, he's been winning season every year. But their season ends tonight in the divisional round. And the Patriots are on their way to a sixth straight AFC championship game. The Subway Post Game Show, again, straight ahead. And Bill Belichick, what his team has done this year. 14 and 2, and now setting the record, advancing to a conference championship game more times consecutively than anyone ever. To think what they were able to do this year, didn't have Brady the first four weeks. Team that's way under the salary cap, and they just continue to march on like they have for years. They will be hosting next Sunday night the AFC Championship game. They'll be hosting either Pittsburgh or Kansas City. It's a 6 o'clock Eastern time start next Sunday night. What a night for Deion Lewis. Caught the game's first touchdown. A few minutes later after a Texans field goal, 
He returned to kick 98 yards for the Patriots' first ever kickoff return touchdown of the postseason. And the later ran one into the second half. Wilford with Matt Patricia sharing a moment. Subway post game show is coming up. Patriots advance.